Hello fellow audio nerds, I'm Steph and this is Major Hi-Fi. This week I got to listen to a truly incredible device. It's the IFI Pro IDSD DAC. Now, one of my favorite amplifiers of all time is the Pro ICAN from IFI. So when I saw this baby, I was super excited because I knew it was going to sound amazing. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, without further ado, let's go back in time. Um, I'll show you my first impression as well as give you a little bit of a layout here. And then uh, I'll meet you back here for some thoughts. All right, um, without further ado, here's the IFI Pro IDSD. Hey everybody. All right, so I've got the IFI I, uh, Pro IDSD with me here. So let's uh, see what's inside. Ooh. All right, here it is. It looks like it might be a around the same size as the ICANN, if you're familiar with that. But yeah, this is, this is it. It looks great. Here's the back, just so you can see. Got some documentation here and a bag of goodies. We've got uh, an antenna and the remote, of course. A USB cable, RCA, a little screwdriver it looks like, and finally the little optical adapter here. So additionally we've got the power supply and just an IEC cable. I'm gonna try and get this thing set up and then we can go through what it does, what it is, and how it works and how it performs. Now for the past few days I've been doing a bunch of reading on the IDSD and Man, this thing is absolutely packed with features. I mean, the inputs and output capabilities are really, really versatile. And because of that, you know, this is, this is, this machine is kind of complicated. Not in the sense that it's difficult to use, I don't think, but just in the sense that in terms of what this review is going to be, it's going to be a little bit simpler than going through each and every thing that the machine is capable of. I'll mention some of those things, but for a full list of specifications and for more information in general about it, I definitely recommend checking out the IFI website and, you know, looking through the manual a little bit because there's a lot here. And I want to give you a comprehensive review of my experience with it, but I don't want to necessarily commit to doing a comprehensive re review of each and every option that this thing's capable of. So if you do have specific questions about certain things, uh, please feel free to leave a comment and I can revisit it and take a closer look at a specific thing. But for now, this review is mostly going to center around uh, listening wired to this box with headphones with a digital source so anyways um, yeah enjoy the review all right so I just hooked the IDSD up to my computer here so now here it is so first of all here we've got this power button if I press and hold this uh, the little IFI light lights up right in the corner there um, and the thing with the IFI light is that when it's green, it's still warming up because there are tubes in here. Um, so the tubes gotta warm up as well. So green means it's warming up. White means it's in solid state mode, which I'll show you how to switch modes in a, in a second here. Orange is tube mode and red is protection mode. Wow. I don't know if you just saw that. I did not even realize that was a thing, but this will, I guess, save your previously, previous, um, volume controls. So that is a really, really cool feature. <laughs> now the first big knob here, this is the input mode. If you switch through this, you'll see that it switches whatever input. So you can select the one that you wanna use. Right now we're using the USB, so I'm gonna leave it right there. Additionally, if you push this button, it will actually change the brightness of the screen. 
And additionally, if you press and hold this button, it will change the polarity. Next is the filter knob here. There are three options for digital processing uh, that are choosable by pushing this filter button here. Um, so there's direct, bit perfect, PCM upsampling, and DSD remastering. Some of this stuff gets a little bit in the weeds in terms of the functionality, and if you have questions specifically about that, I can try to answer them, although I think, uh, to be completely honest with you, I don't understand it fully, and there's a lot of really good information online that's helped me a lot with just the stuff that I know about it, so I recommend doing a little Google search if you want to learn more about the differences between these digital processing uh, options. Now when you're in PCM mode, uh, that's when you have access to the different filters. Uh, there are five of them, and uh, I'm going to take some pretty shots of this uh, IFI Pro IDSD and let you do a little bit of reading about what they are and uh, yeah, what the, what the whole thing is with each filter. Here you go. And then lastly, if you push and hold this filter button, that will, um, uh, it's, it's the WPS button, which bas basically can help connect it to your router if you wanna listen wirelessly, um, which this thing can do. It's so crazy, all the different features. Um, that it has. There's a switch down here all the way to the left. There's a little symbol there. Um, that is uh, solid state mode. If you flip it to the middle, that's tube mode. And then tube plus mode. There's also some information you should know about this that, you know, if you're into the specific um, components of those modes, I'll put some information for you over here. Um, And just a heads up for you, if you're listening and you decide to switch modes, uh, you know, while you're listening, the output part of this actually has to switch circuits. So it sort of stops the music for a second, switches modes, and then, uh, and then we'll start playing again. And the thing to, another thing to just be aware of is that when you're in st solid state mode, uh, sometimes the tubes, um, Say you were listening in tube mode, you switched to solid state, and now you're sort of want to go back to tube. If you wait too long between going back to the tubes, it's possible that they would have cooled down a bunch. And so the unit will actually wait until they're warmed up again to actually make that switch to the tube mode. Eh, food for thought. Over here, we've got a three and a half millimeter. Uh, this is a TRRS, so it's a balanced three and a half millimeter. You've got the standard 6.3 millimeter, and then you've got a 2.5 millimeter output here. I mean, just what else could a kid want? You know what I mean? There's a lot of options here. Then finally over here, you've got um, this switch, which is a gain switch. Um, IFI recommends that you should always start it on zero, and if you need more gain, you can always give it a little bit more. Um, go up to nine and 18, just to preserve your headphones and make sure it doesn't, it doesn't blow up your ears, you know? Um, then you've got the, uh, the volume knob here. And I just want to mention a few other functions that I won't get crazy into today, but just for your information and stuff that you can check out on your own. Um, you can listen wirelessly via a network with this. It supports Spotify, Tidal, and other streaming services, as well as AirPlay and playback from a hard drive, an SD card, which is right in the back here, um, and USB memory, which you also can see back here. It also has MQA decoding, so if you're listening to Tidal, you can really get the full, uh, the full kind of picture there with the MQA decoding. Not too many products are doing that these days, and the IFI is really on top of it. There's jitter elimination for all inputs, and all the inputs are also galvanically isolated, so they're really quiet, and um, and that's really helps with the with the signal to noise ratio. And then finally, there are external clocking options. This can be used in um, a home kind of a home setup, or it can be used in a 
uh, in a recording studio a more professional setup and there, there are ways that you can actually change the, the settings in the back to make it work for whatever way that you are using it. Um, whether it be in a studio, a more professional setup with uh, you know the different kind of like voltages and stuff, um, or if you're at at home lit, um, getting this hooked up for your your leisurely listen. Yeah, I'm going to make sure I'm getting sound out of here, get some headphones going, and take a listen because I mean, with everything put into this box, um, I know it's going to be good and. Uh, Looking forward to it. All right, so now to get this thing going with my computer, I'm just gonna, I have a Mac, so I'm going to System Preferences, Sound, and it's already showing up here, IFI. Um, cool, let's open Spotify. I've got my DT990s uh, on right now, and I'm going to be listening to this with uh, a really wide variety of headphones, just to get a sense also for how much power it has and, you know, how much, what it can really drive. Um, my, nine, my 990s are just the 32 ohm ones, so they're not very hard to drive at all, but I know them well and take a listen. Kind of be going back and forth too, um, between what it would have been without it, without the DAC, and then what it is with it. So, let's see. Well, already, um, just the thing that's popping out and really noticeable is just how the um, the dynamics are so lively. Um, it's really cool. Now I'm listening to the song "The Magician" by Andy Schaff, and it's interesting because like the high frequencies almost sounds like a little bit more bright or like a little bit more extended rather. When I was switching back and forth between listening just straight. Uh, without the IDSD and then going to the IDSD. It was interesting because I could hear the bass guitar the whole time, but the the actual like tone of it felt a little bit clearer with the IDSD. And I wasn't necessarily, um, wasn't necessarily expecting that actually. But um, yeah, it's something about the tone felt a little bit cleaned up, a little bit clearer, um, more spacious. Also in this song, there's sort of these like bright strings that come in and they happen at the same time that some cymbal stuff is happening. And it's interesting because before listening, those two tones could sometimes get like a little bit blended together. And here it just feels like there's way more separation. Like they feel like they, and they have their own space and their own thing going on. Um, yeah. So it feels like a pretty drastic difference, especially right there. This is really, really cool. All right, so I'm listening right now to a song by uh, Lewis Watson called Deep the Water. And in this song, when the chorus comes in, these gang vocals singing the words come kind of underneath the lead vocal. And when I was listening before without the IDSD, um, those gang vocals sort of blended in with the drums. Now the drums during the chorus get really roomy sounding, like they're kind of um, reverby, and you could tell that there's like a, you know a lot of maybe they used a lot of room mics um, in that the mix during that section. Now with these now hap going on with the IDSD those gang vocals have their own sort of sense of space and as a result you get this sense of soundstage that's way realer than it was before. Um, now the 990s already have like a really nice soundstage in my opinion and now it's even greater. There's even more detail in the depth. So um, I'm really curious how it affects a soundstage with a headphone that doesn't have as good of a soundstage already um, because I wonder if it kind of provides any depth. It doesn't really feel like necessarily it's getting deeper, but it just feels so much more like precise and uh, detailed in that depth, if that makes sense. <laughs> yes. See, now this uh, it makes me so happy. <laughs> I'm listening to um, Matter of Time by Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings. Now I was really curious to see with this song how 
the IDSD would contribute to the song because it is definitely like played live and there's really like not a whole lot of like compression being used as a as a mix tool I think in this song the dynamics were unreal and by unreal I mean extremely realistic <laughs> for example uh, the trumpet in particular just had this such a sense of humanity but in reality you could hear the humanity in the organ and the guitar and the drums and of course Sharon's voice is killer so the sort of um, all of that kind of put together makes just the emotional impact and the experience of listening to that song like such a cool experience you could really feel like you're there and you can really hear the players putting their breath into it without it necessarily having to be breathy. Um, you can just feel the amount of energy that they're physically putting into that horn. Um, you feel that really coming through. So it is detailed in a way that is really, really awesome. It adds a lot to the experience. Anyway, so I'm going to continue to listen to this throughout the week with a bunch of different headphones and you know, see what it can drive and see, um, you know, how my feelings about it sort of, sort of grow and change and adapt uh, as time goes on. So I'll check back in with you in the future. Okay, here we go. Um, I tried to listen in a few different scenarios with a bunch of different headphones. Um, and it actually was really good at driving headphones. Um, I tried it with the Focal Clear and Utopia. I tried it with the LCD4 from Odyssey, which is notoriously hard to drive. Um, and it did a really good job. Now for something more like a dedicated, uh, you know, power, power for your headphones, um, the iCan is still like just an amazing sounding amplifier. And this has really good amplification too. But if you want something that's even more enhanced, you may want to pair those two together. Now the DAC provided a super lively, dynamic performance of the same songs that you could listen to every day. And it really enhanced the listening experience because of that. The dynamics were totally unreal. And I guess that maybe has something to do with the ridiculous uh, low noise floor with this. Um, there's a really high signal to noise ratio, so you can kind of really feel the music bend and breathe and move with the emotion of the players. As a result, I felt the soundstage was incredible, and for headphones that didn't have much of a soundstage, it really provided such a different experience entirely. Um, and for headphones that did have already a good soundstage, I think that it really kind of zeroed in on the detail of that soundstage. Really made things sort of come um, into more of a precise light um, where particular they are, they were in depth. At least that's sort of how my brain interpreted it when you know I'd sit down and close my eyes. So um, really provided a lot for the soundstage. Now kind of mo jumping between the filters, uh, there were sort of subtle differences between them all, and some of them seemed more obvious than others to my ear. My personal favorite filters to listen to were the minimum phase filter and the apodizing, apodizing, I should figure out how to pronounce that filter. Um, and the reason that I really liked both of those is that I kind of felt like the soundstage was particularly improved with those. Now the difference between those two filters to me, sort of felt like the minimum phase felt a little bit clearer overall, um, a little bit of a better sound stage. The apodizing one uh, sort of felt a little bit warmer. It still had a lot of the same characteristics, um, but just a little bit of a sense of warmth to it. And another sort of difference is that the sense of height wasn't quite as good as the minimum phase one. But saying that, it was still really musical and, um, and still provided a good soundstage. The Jibs Transient Optimized Filter um, sounded really good as well. And as you might guess from the title, uh, the transients were indeed optimized. Um, in particular to me, the way that I sort of interpreted it was some extra high mid energy. So um, 
I just remember I was listening to um, some Keith Jarrett and I felt like the I could hear more of the hammers of the piano and um, it was a little bit less harmonically rich perhaps but um, but really came through strong and with with that attack the bit perfect plus filter differed from the bit perfect filter because um, it seemed to have a little bit more of a high high frequency extension going on and um, you could really sort of hear it in uh, instruments and parts of the song that kind of already had a lot of high frequency information there. I could hear it in cymbals. Um, sometimes background vocals would really become, you know, you'd get a little bit extra energy there um, in, the, in the highs. And I felt like in particular on the transients, you'd get, I'd feel more high frequency extension. So it's sort of hard to describe and it was also kind of subtle, but that's what I heard. Overall, I think the IFI Pro IDSD DAC is awesome and uh, it really enha can enhance the listening experience tenfold. At the same time, it's also super versatile, so you can use it in a number of different ways. And uh, for more information on that, like I said, please check out the IFI website or uh, check out the manual for this because you can really get deep with it and you can also um, you know, just use it for different scenarios. It can be used for home use and studio use. Um, so it's really, really powerful. So if you're an audiophile and you're looking for a new DAC to really enhance your home system, I think that you it would be a mistake not to check this out because it's really powerful and uh, sounds really good too. Thanks so much for watching. Pardon the extreme length of this video as I'm sure it will be because of some all the features with this. But uh, yeah, please give it a thumbs up if you like the video and be sure to subscribe for more. And for another perspective on this DAC, another one of us here at Major Hi-Fi did a review on the blog. I will post it down below. All right, everybody, see you next time, bye.